continuing on where we last uh, left off, uh, let's continue on and um, work on the artificial intelligence for our z zombie shock trooper here. So the reason why we give a shell shock example scene is so that we can learn a lot from it. And there are two other AIs inside of this world. One of them is the rat and the other one is the shock trooper that is completely, uh, you know, uh, rigged up with guns and all that stuff. And we can look at their behavior trees by, for example, selecting the rat. As you can see, it is it is a pretty good size behavior tree, but not too long, um, and uh, you know it allows the rat to do all kinds of things. Now, as you can see at the first root, there is a node that says the rat setup, and it calls a class which is called the rat set setup action. Now, this is simply a um, you know a, a script file that is being called inside of our uh, project pane, and that script file you know sets up the rat for you know all the variables that it needs and all that sort of stuff and we can take a look at that so if I take the same name rat setup action and search for it then I find a C sharp script which is inside of our actions folder for our rain AI now if you call a class from uh, you know an action you wanna you know keep it organized and put it in the actions folder now if I look at the code of this script there's nothing really that we need for this code for our character because really what it does is it's it set up uh, you know all kinds of um, uh, you know uh, waypoints for the rat and our character does not have any waypoints so we can skip cloning this node but if you ever feel the need in the future this is what you can do when your character has just been set up now then there are some other things here if I go click on the rat and I open it up you can see that there are a couple scripts that the rat has that we don't have on our character. One of them is a data controller. Now, the data controller, if I click on it, you, you will see that it selects it inside of the FPS control library. So this script comes out of the FPS control core functionality. And the reason why it comes out of the, you know, the core code base is because it has to do with health. And uh, you know, that way it can receive damage from the player and those kind of things. So when we go back to our shock trooper, we want to create uh, that data controller, grab it, and, and drop it onside of the character. Now it asks us a couple of variables. What is the maximum amount of health that you want this you know, zombie shock trooper to have? And I'm going to put 30. And the current health when he starts up is 30 as well. And the initial health when he starts up is 30 as well. So I can also decide if I want this character to automatically heal over time. Uh, I'm just going to turn that off for now to keep things easier. But you can always turn that on later. Let's go back to the rat and just use this as a cheat sheet to see what's going on. Now, you can see that in the rat AI, he's asking what is the data controller here and what is the AI itself. Uh, and then some other extra variables that have de been defined for this rat AI. We don't have this script on our character either. Then we have a rain agent and a character controller. Let's go back here. We see our character controller here and a rain agent, but we don't have an AI script that is actually, you know, uh, intelligently changing things for us that can be read out by the behavior tree. So we'll need one. Let's go back to the rat and we're going to clone it from him. So I'm going to click on the rat AI here. And that's a JavaScript file, which is inside of our scripts folder. And I'm going to duplicate it. Edit, duplicate. And I'm going to rename it and call it zombie AI. Just because, you know, this is a cool zombie. All right, then I'm going to double click that one to open it up. And we're going to make some changes to it. Uh, because the rat has all kinds of things going on that we don't need for our zombie. Um, and so we're going to X that out. Okay, let's take a look here. This script is actually quite easy. So uh, don't worry if this is a bit overwhelming or if you go, oh, I use FPS control so that I don't have to do all this. Don't worry, it's very, very simple. First, what starts off is it defines a little bit of a class. It talks to the rain, um, first it talks to the rain engine. Uh, then it defines the AI and the data controller and then a variable called hungry because the rat gets hungry and finds cheese. So I'm going to turn the hungry variable off uh, by commenting it out because we don't need that. Then it goes into the start function, which this, this function is called when the game starts. And it defines you know, the components here, the AI, as well as the data controller. And then it uh, pretty much talks to our behavior tree and defines these variables. Now, we have the variable dead and we have the variable got hit. 
but we don't need found food and hungry. So we're going to take that out as well. Then in the update function, which runs every time a frame renders, so that's a couple times a second, uh, hopefully more times a second, that means you're a faster computer, and we can see that it updates these variables inside of the behavior tree as well. So there's health and there's current time and hungry, we only need the variable health. So I'm going to turn the rest of those off. Then there's a custom function apply damage, which of course applies damage to the character. And um, as you can see, there is a use of a get hit variable and an enemy target. So um, we're going to leave those the way they are for now. So uh, if you want to know a little bit more about what it does, you can see the if statement, if the damage source that comes into this function, which comes out of the FPS control core code base, is uh, equals to gunfire, which is our player, and the uh, source object that hurts us um, is not an obstacle, so it's not an obstacle in the world, then we can apply you know, the got hit, set it to true, and define what the enemy target is, so where the actual hit came from. So that's what this script does. Very, very easy. So I'm going to save that and go back to Unity. And now I'm going to apply this zombie AI to our shock trooper here. And of course, the AI and the data controller is not defined, but the data controller is right here, and the AI is, you know, this, this character as well. So all we need to do is drag the shock trooper in both of these places. Now, this will not work if you don't have a data controller applied to the script. You cannot drop it in, but, you know, now um, it's all set and done. So let's go back to our shock trooper AI here. I'm sorry. Tornado Twins behave. Let's run the game, and nothing much should have changed, but I'm just checking if we get any funky errors here, so no. No errors, we've done everything perfectly fine. And that means we're ready to, uh, to uh, set up the rest. So, let's go into our uh, got hit mode here, and add a new action, and say uh, animate. And we need a new animation here, and um, so we're going to animate the hit. The fact that the character got hit. Let's click on the Shock Trooper, open up the Animations panel, and there are a whole bunch of animations in uh, you know, the 5.1 version that we already have rigged up for you. And uh, one of the uh, animations that are, uh, that's uh, a nice hit animation is called Hit Torso Front. So I'm going to use that. And then it asks us how long is that animation, so how many seconds do we have to wait until we move on to the next thing. And I think 0 0.7 is about right. Uh, we'll have to take a look uh, in a little bit. And then what's the wrap mode? We only want to play this animation once, because you know it only gets hits once. And then what we need to do is um, add another note here and call this um, a... where is it? Assign, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes just search a little bit. Assign, and then we're going to set the got hit variable back to one to uh, to to zero. Got hit. Sorry, hold on. We need to put this here. Got hit equals zero. So why am I doing this? If we come in here, we go to the got hit variable, and this node only gets executed if got hit is equals one, which we have done in this script. Then once it goes in and plays the animation, it waits for 0 0.7 seconds, then it goes to the next node, which puts the got hit back to zero because we're done getting hit, we, we've already animated that, and it continues and it goes back. Now, the only problem here is, you know, the uh, fine player needs to stop when he is actually getting hit, which, uh, you know, is not the case because it executes this node as soon as health is higher than zero. So what we need to do is we need to add another precondition that it does not go in here when, uh, you know, got hit is true. So it's very easy to do. Just right-click the root again, create another sequencer, move that one up, and then put the find player inside of this sequencer and, sit and tell this sequencer that it can only execute when got hit does not equal 1. And we have to give this a name, um, so I'm just going to call this main logic. So 
and that will make sure that the find player will stop. So let's test this and see if I'm, you know, if I'm correct. So the character does his thing after a couple seconds. Now I need to pick up a gun because otherwise the player does not get hurt. Reload the gun. There we go. Fire at him and you saw he got hit for a second there. Wonderful. And then he gets stuck. Because really what happens is he is dead. So <laughs> health is lower than zero. So he stops walking towards us, but we never made the logic for him to actually die. Uh, but this is excellent progress already. I love his response. So um, what we're going to do in the next video is assign the death animation. And it should be pretty easy from here. All right, so follow me on to the next one.